Thank you, uh, Roger, um, and thank you for the opportunity to speak to you today. I'm going to try and give you an update on our own BIM journey. Obviously, I'm speaking from the perspective of uh, the higher level in terms of policy, um, and I I'll try and touch on where we're going. Um, why are we interested in BIM in the uh, construction policy unit? Well, we identified uh, following a review of the Public Works contracts in 2014, we identified BIM as a key uh, tool in terms of uh, managing, better managing risk. Uh, we saw the capacity for it to uh, deliver projects more efficiently um, with greater certainty, not just for us in terms of our as clients, but also for those that are involved, contractors, suppliers, designers, and so on. But it also gave an opportunity for better evaluation of the project performance, both before, before we put a shovel in the ground, but also after. Um, those are the key reasons. That was in 2014. So you're all wondering why we didn't launch into BIM at that point in time. I'll just take you back a little bit. 2014, not even sure if we were seeing a glimmer of growth in the construction industry at that point. Uh, many of you in the room, I'm sure, went through the, uh, the, the very low period there, the Great Depression, I think we called it in, 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 at the time. And I think it's very difficult to remember uh, just how difficult things were back then, given where we are now in terms of the economy. Uh, and I know standing here in Galway today, perhaps things are not as boomy as they are in Dublin, but certainly there is growth in the industry. Um, so we, we had that particular challenge. Uh, we weren't going to say tomorrow, next year, whatever, we're going to require BIM. We needed to see, was the industry ready? Uh, I've had some, I've uh, been dipping in and out of all the presentations today and there's some really, really terrific work being done. And what I think heartens me is the, people are identifying difficulties, challenges, obstacles, but what's really, really helpful uh, from our perspective is there's also solutions being discussed, which is, something that we'll be taking away with us. We're already working on many of those, and I'll give you an outline shortly as to what that is. A lot of it is below the radar. I'm sure many of you, some of you in the room will be aware of them. But I suppose it wasn't uh, until the establishment of the National BIM Council, which um, I was invited to participate in, and I, I, it was a, a really, really enlightening experience. It was uh, heartening. It was, a, I suppose, a joint journey between industry uh, academia and ourselves in terms of the public service as to how we were going to deliver BIM. And I, I, I certainly took a lot out of it and it heartened us in terms of, it, it allowed us to push things on a little bit further in terms of asking government to support the adoption of BIM. So we published a consultation paper in 2017, uh, got a lot of good feedback on that. Um, decided that, yeah, now was an opportune time to push the question with government, and government, to be fair, have supported it. Now, the strategy is very, very high level, um, and, and many people have commented on that earlier on. Um, that's not the BIM adoption plan, per se. So, uh, since that point, we have been working uh, across the public service, and obviously there are early adopters of BIM. Now, one of our key objectives in terms of why we're getting involved is that through procurement we want to try and deliver a consistent approach so that all of you who are responding to public sector demands for contracts are not driven demented with different demands here, there and everywhere. Are we there yet in terms of ready to publish? Uh, no, no we're not. Uh, why aren't we? Um, I suppose what we've been looking at in a lot of detail, and we're going back to mapping processes and so on to try and understand how we can better deliver um, projects. So we're, we're looking right back in the very early stages of the project's development. So a lot of you might be aware at the moment there's a review of a, a little known document perhaps outside the public service but the public spending code which is effectively the rules that govern um, project approval right through from uh, inception, business case, through to, so before designers become involved at all. Um, we're trying to map, and many might be a bit surprised as where does BIM sit into this. We actually see 
a huge benefit in the, in the disciplines and the process that bring, BIM brings to the, to the project development stage being commenced right back at that point in time. We did uh, uh, issue a, a, a draft implementation plan to our colleagues I chair, a committee made up of all the main capital spending departments, um, and we discuss issues around procurement and contracting and inform government in terms of policy. Um, we circulated a draft implementation paper amongst those bodies just to see the state of readiness, test the water, so to speak. Um, and there are a lot of the obstacles that we identified, and it's, it's extraordinary, the, 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 the similarities. I mean, between small organizations, I was listening to talk there about SMEs, how they are going to get ready for BIM, there's huge parallels between ourselves, even on an SME, in terms of the state of readiness. Uh, large companies, and uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of, of issues, I think, that we, we share in this journey. Um, we have a, 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 what we term loosely as a public BIM group, so we have lots of colleagues across the public sector who are feeding into the, the implementation part of that, how it can be done. Um, we have early adopters. Um, the HSE have used BIM, it's being used on the National Children's Hospital. Uh, Dublin City Council are, are using it uh, on a number of projects. Some of the things that we've discovered, uh, I suppose, on our, on our journey, and we're still on that journey, uh, and it was absolutely uh, extraordinary to hear it said in another context today, but uh, in a couple of presentations I was at, people said that the design team are developing the employer's information requirements. That's kind of troubling from our perspective. If this is going to be client-led, the client has to be very clear about what it is they're looking for. So we're now deep down into the detail of this thing, and we're trying to understand uh, where the supports are needed and where the advice and the guidance and so on is necessary. We're also introducing, uh, I was interested in Vicky's presentation there in terms of how she was uh, showing the, um, bringing the, the supply chain and the subcontractors in to explain what their demands were. Um, we're also organizing a, a similar event, but it's with a very different purpose, but it's to explain what this means. BIM is a part of the picture, but there are many digital initiatives going on, both in the private sector, but in the public sector as well. And we're, we're trying to explain to people what this is all about, because if you're not directly involved in project delivery, as many of you are, but many of the people who make the decisions uh, on projects and where they go ahead and you know, where, where they get stuck, they don't understand these processes and they don't fully appreciate the, the landscape. So we're trying to explain what digital can do and how it can deliver, because many of the issues that we foresee are in that space where we're going to have challenges in, there's no point in us asking and telling everybody in industry to deliver a project through BIM if we lack the capacity ourselves to understand and manage that process and lead it, frankly, is what we're looking at. So we, we are developing uh, contracts uh, that will enable BIM. We've started, and it may not necessarily have caught the attention of people in the room, who are specifically focused on BIM. But we had a consultation paper recently on the engagement of consultants, which is where we want to start. And we wanted to set out very clear scope of service requirements. Call them employer's information requirements if you wish. But the, we're involved in a much broader review of procurement um, that will see BIM integrated from the early stages of the project all the way through the different delivery stages to the ones that you will all become involved in, right the way through out the other end into performance evaluation. So we're trying, uh, we've, we've set ourselves uh, a number of objectives about to, to, to govern our review, but we've also set, I suppose, there's two themes to it. First one is risk management, which is something we feel we're not really great at. Um, over the years, I think that's been demonstrated, risk has been uh, unfairly transferred in some cases. Um, so we're, we're, we're using that as a, 
as, a, as a key theme that's being built into everything that we're looking at. But the other one is digital, um, uh, quality of information. We call it quality of information because digital tends to divide the room uh, in, in a number of, uh, depends on the, the forum or the audience. But it's quality of information. And, and again, back to Jan Zarr's presentation, um, this is, the, you know, we, we, we don't quite have the, the, the roadmap planned out to that extent, but certainly there are huge synergies in terms of the government's overall digital strategy and how the construction of public works projects will fit into that. And so there's, there's, a, there's a, a large conversation happening. So I guess what I can say is that I'm standing here a little bit more certain about where we're going to go with digital delivery than I would have been the last time I was at uh, one of these gatherings. The reason I'm less certain is not that we're not committed to it, it's the extent of complexity, the different players are only now really coming to, to the fore as we start to push a little bit harder on this. And I think uh, the establishment of the, the center of excellence that, that was recommended in the, um, the roadmap, uh, that will certainly provide, again, another step forward for us because it's not just support for SMEs, support for industry, but it's also support for our colleagues in the public service who are going to be delivering these projects uh, through the digital means. I think that would be uh, an invaluable um, assistance in that regard. So I can't give you times and dates um, as to where and when the, these issues will be addressed, but the overall strategy remains. There'll be a phased implementation. We're going to have to satisfy ourselves and we'll work with colleagues across the sectors to see that they have the, the capacity uh, to, to enable this thing possible, pro properly. Um, and so I suppose that, that, that is our plan. It's going to crystallize a little bit further. We, we're going to publish an implementation paper shortly once we've uh, ironed out some of the issues that we're, we're trying to address. Um, and we look forward to your comments at that point. So thank you very much. opportunity for the audience to pose a question to David so that he can take your questions into consideration going forward. I'm sure he won't mind doing that. So do we, are there any questions? Do we have a roving microphone? Oh, just one question here at the front. Please. Thank you. Could I have a show of hands for other questions while we're waiting for the mic? Are there any other questions? There's one further back. Okay. Thanks very much. Uh, Brian Mar is my name. I'm a town planner and it's been a fascinating day. I've really, really enjoyed it. I come from an architectural background myself, and I'm quite familiar with BIM as a, as a concept. But I suppose what I am finding difficult as a planner is how uh, BIM is really just a drafting tool when it comes to submitting to that system. And sometimes I find that uh, the three-dimensional capacity of BIM is perhaps not utilized to its full extent. And I just wonder if, there are any, uh, if there's any intention to bring our planning system in line with some of the aspirations you've just described. Well, yeah, I, I was decidedly uh, jealous of uh, Jan uh, Zara's position earlier on. The, the, the department for which you work seems to have a great deal more control over things than we would. So that, that area, we're back to the, the, the you know, er, different areas of responsibility. But I think something like BCMS uh, for the building control system does demonstrate what can be done. I mean, I think there's an ambition to move that on. And, you know, uh, the, 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 the comment about the, the PDF is well made. Um, I mean, it's certainly, if I was to put my, you know, get out the crystal ball, or if I was to try, try to set a target from our perspective in procurement, we would like to see the digital model being used as a tendering instrument. Will we see it? And I, there was a lot of commentary around this earlier on, you know, how can you not put that out there in the tender? Well, we will when we're a little bit more comfortable that this thing doesn't present a massive risk in terms of, you know, what's in that model, what is it, uh, you know, is it up to the standards that we require? And this goes back, but again, back to the planning, I don't see why not. It's used in, in many countries, I think New York, Singapore, uh, are using that as, a, as a, an integral part of their own uh, town planning. So yes, I hope so, but 
I daren't say yes. Um, does a, a white lady in white there, could you get the microphone, please? Thank you. Just raise your hand again, please. Thank you. Hello, uh, my name is Trina Turner, and um, I'm just wondering, um, obviously a lot of people have alluded to today, and I did myself in my own um, presentation, but um, do not think at this point that an actual date in the sand of a mandate would be the way to go in order to engage the industry, also the government, yeah. and the subcontractors, and all the suppliers, and the existing industry. Um, I think, after doing a lot of research myself, that is absolutely required. Mm. And, um, you know, the people who are here today are BIM advocates, but obviously we are representative and we are on the train already, want, for want of a better analogy. But um, I just wonder what you're... Do you not think that's a, that's a vital part at this point? Um, I do, but um, I don't think it's as simple as setting a date realistically from what we're seeing in terms of I mean even in the room today you know people talking about design teams writing uh, employers information requirements that's sending alarm bells off all over the place so we have to be satisfied that we have the capacity to set the requirements as the client we're not there yet but absolutely we will be as I said we, there are a number of things in train whereby we're going to be trying to clear some of the obstacles that we see to this. And they're very, very simple issues, but they've just not been addressed in terms of, it hasn't been brought up. We've been, as I say, there is a, an implementation paper that has gone out, and it's extraordinary some of the feedback that has come back on it, to the point where, yes, if we set a date, that's fine. But does it necessarily mean that the, 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 the BIM implementation will happen? No, it doesn't. But it'll be a key driver. Well, and it has actually worked in other countries. Well, you, you, I heard that earlier on. I mean, there's, a very, <laughs> there's very mixed views about whether it's worked it across the water in a nearest neighbour. It depends who you're talking to. So it's, it's not quite cut and dried. Uh, from our perspective, um, you know, we're, we're advising government on, on risk and procurement and tendering. And we're not convinced that we're in a position yet to press that button. When we are, we will, and we'll make sure that it happens, and we will drive it. But um, there are issues that we see that will cause. I mean, there's no point in us pretending something to the industry and to the, the, the gathering here and not delivering. But we will be, we will be pushing uh, on a number of fronts over the next few months uh, as we try to deliver it. Um, I heard the BIM protocol mentioned earlier on, for example. We won't be using the BIM protocol. We, you know, we, we've looked at it. We don't believe it's suitable. So we have to develop our own approach. So those are things that are, that are happening and we're working on at the moment. If I could, I think we have another few minutes, but if I could just maybe add to that. Um, there's been quite a few papers today uh, that have suggested that there are things that they would like the government to do in yes. support of the BIM initiatives. Could I maybe turn that on its head? Because if you read the papers, you'll hear what people are saying. What does the government need industry to do that it's not already doing? Because industry is very much, as we've seen today, pushing forward. A lot of voluntary work with CETA in order yeah. to do the research. I mean, the effort is just enormous from industry. Yeah. So maybe could I turn that question on its head and say, what would government like industry do that it's not already doing without the support of government? Um, I, I mean, I do, I, I take the point that if government wants to do this, government needs to decide. And whilst government has said it wants to see digital adopted in the industry, not, not just in the public sector, there's, there's a, a realisation that it can drive efficiencies right across the sector. I mean, Jan Zar's presentation earlier on about productivity and the fragmented nature of the industry and how does one address those issues and, and we, we, we firmly believe that BIM is and has the potential to do that. Um, the question is, and it comes back to being able to join all those pieces up and to provide, from our perspective, to provide the, the guidance. And I mean, I think uh, there's, there's, there's a lot of good information out there. Um, the EU, EU BIM task group uh, produced a really good handbook in terms of how 
the European Union's public sectors to drive, drive um, productivity and so on. Um, and and, and we're, we just have to be satisfied that, that we have the capacity first and foremost and that the industry can deliver for us as well. But, but to return to the question, uh, what uh, more than industry is currently doing, can, is the, would the government like industry to do? Is there anything specifically that comes to mind? Not, not from our perspective. I mean, I, I'm looking at it from the perspective of procurements, and clearly we have to make the decisions. And, and we're, we're clear on where we need to go, um, but it's to ensure that we collectively have the capacity to deliver on that. That's, that's our key concern at the moment. David, can I further add that I'm delighted that you're here today and that you've spoken to us and that you've made the time to listen to the sort of things that are uh, coming up today, which I have to say are very exciting and very challenging and very motivating. So uh, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you.